Now, their claim was different, but I was denied any chance to answer for what their charges were in court. And so where then would I be left on the day of the suit commencing? The order was dated for March 27th of 2017, but based upon an emergency three-day detention that officially began on, uh, I believe, March 25th of 2017. So where was I at the time I entered that specific facility on March 25th, 2017? I had been witness to crimes, including crimes of fraud and child abuse. I had been retaliated against for attempting to go through the internal grievance procedures to report on these crimes and to find remedy. And I had showed up on site at a location where I knew by law the people I was to encounter and the people who represented themselves to me as being the kind of professional they alleged themselves to be at the time were mandated by law to take reports on and to file reports on fraud and child abuse. I also came with an attache case that was filled with a variety of materials, including reports, reports that may well have, shall we say, brought up questions that those who had access to state secrets may have needed to be able to identify in the course of consideration of those accesses they had to state secrets, trading materials for a course of study with a publicly funded grant at a private institution I was set to begin, notes on my own investigation, notes that were actually uh, in attendance with uh, my review of legal documentation, which at that point also included uh, case law references and information about, among other things, uh, uh, grievance procedures and um, specific investigation connected to the ongoing sunset review of the Texas uh, State uh, the State Bar the Texas Bar uh, Association. These things were all in that attaché case. That attaché case was stolen. Not only that, but while I was there on site, somebody opened up that attaché case, and I alleged they made copies. And in that attache case was also a number of other items, including my primary uh, identification documents that I was not requested to show when I went to the private facility. So what does this mean about leaving me in the place I was on the day of the commencement of that suit? Where was I on a actual date of the order, which was March 25th? I'm sorry, March 27th. On that day, I was in the third day of an illegal three-day detention being transported to another facility wherein I had been told it was located at one address that was different than the address that was written on the actual order that I had in my hands when I was put in the constable's vehicle for transport and told by the constable that despite the fact that the order had the inaccurate address on it, there was nothing they could do about it. Where does that leave me? Mind you, I had already gone to a constable's office in order to report on securities fraud and to report my experiences of being retaliated against when I attempted to address these matters with somebody who represented himself to me as being the chief of the Houston Police Department. <coughs> Then I tried to file grievances with the State Bar of Texas and the Texas Medical Board. They gave me different justifications for why they did not acknowledge those grievances had legal standing to pursue as disciplinary grievances related to professional consideration of the individuals that represented themselves to me as being required to be accountable to those particular grievance processes, i.e. the Texas Bar Association and the Texas Board of Medical Examiners or the Texas Medical Board as the people that were administering the medication as well as the people that were diagnosing and providing recommendations on treatment were. So then I filed a original petition 
for request of review before an in-bank uh, paneling of the Supreme Court of Texas in exercise of its plenary powers to identify or to uh, rule on the case of and the consideration regarding my allegations of a demonstration of a pattern of racketeering activity in addition to other crimes up to and including a retaliatory illegal d detention in order to cover up crimes that should have been addressed in consideration of performance of those identified legally as required and mandated to report child abuse and fraud. Where does that leave me? Because by the time it was denied on February, on, on June 8th, there was a concurrent process that confirmed that in fact, I was being trafficked personally and that other things were being done concurrent to my efforts to receive assistance for among other things, fleeing threats of violence, fatal violence and retaliation that also included not only threats, but actual, uh, uh, actual engagement in acts of physical violence to advantage people that might otherwise be considered through process of ordinary political process, my uh, competition or opposition and up to and including an electoral campaign. So where does that leave me if uh, the standard is applied concerning uh, where they were on the day of the suit. Does anybody want to talk about what happened before I was able to file my petition to the criminal court and I was physically assaulted and I attempted to obtain a police report after I had to call the police knowing as I did that the intention of the assault and the threats of continued assault was aimed at trying to compel me to call the police to file a police report to interfere with my efforts at due process. Where does that leave me on that day? This says the position of the parties at the time of the suit is not their position with regard to legal burdens and the legal consequences of contract related determinations but their position with regard to possession of funds and property. So at each of those points, where was I when it came to possession of funds and property? And insofar as the first engagement was in consideration of the process in San Francisco, what had been the determination as a result of that first process? that I had been too disabled to earn wages that could be compensated through work for the two years prior, including immediately following my participation in a political election campaign. Then that calls into question, what was it I was in possession of prior to being disabled? If I am correct, in the, the two years that would have been available for determination based upon the amount provided, which was $24,000, then at the time I was making the transition between an indoor living arrangement where I actually lived in a church and where I lived in the basement apartment of a room that was in the uh, building that had recently been uh, attempted and put up for sale by somebody who himself had been disabled. He had experienced a stroke that had mentally incapacitated him during the election campaign season after he had expressed his intent to run and at that time his brother ended up stepping in to take over and run in as part of a campaign for Congress.